Hey guys, Big HD here. As you can see, I managed to see the Super Mario Brothers movie over the weekend. And it sucks. It sucks that Rotten Tomatoes cannot comprehend how amazing this movie was, because I freaking loved it from beginning to end. This was just an amazing movie, and I don't understand the criticisms from Rotten Tomatoes or, or from other critics here. What were they expecting, The Godfather? Yeah, the story is basic, but guess what? That's the whole point of Super Mario Bros. It's more about gameplay than, than story, and this is as basic as, as it can get. The whole premise is about Mario rescuing, in this case, his brother, when they were going through this pipe that just took him to another world, in this case, it's the Mushroom Kingdom. And the whole argument saying that this thing is catered to, to kids. Well, yes and no. This is more for like a general audience for the most part. I mean, I loved it. I was I was pretty much a kid again. Just watching this movie and I was grinning from ear to ear. Of course, the animation is just beautiful. The the music and the callbacks to like different tunes that are just iconic in the Mario games. Uh, the, the cast overall, <laughs> I have to say the cast actually did a really good job. And of course, the one that stole the show the most was obviously Jack Black. He just knocked it out of the park. I mean, you could tell early on like from the trailers that he was going to have a blast playing this character. Now, the, the criticism that uh, Chris Pratt got uh, over the past few months because of his portrayal of Mario. People kind of gave him a hard time over it, but you know what? He actually did a decent job. I understand that people wanted to see Charles Martinet, or hear Charles Martinet, portray the Mario character like he should. But um, we have to remember that before Charles Martinet was given the part, we also had other actors portray him. Captain Lou Albano, we had Walker, uh, Walker Boone, and we even had Peter Cullen. Um, I even had like my concerns about certain characters like Seth Rogen being a uh, Donkey Kong, but you know what? He did his part. He's fine. It wasn't just a Mario movie, but it was also a Donkey Kong movie. It was also a, it also had Mario Kart references. It had Luigi's Mansion references. Of course, this is coming from a fan who's been a, a Mario fan, a, a, a Nintendo fan in general. I think ever since 1986 when I actually got my first NES, 86 or 87. I was. I was probably two or three years old at the time the current actress that plays princess peach she actually did a really decent job to be honest seeing how um there was some concern about her portrayal she wasn't a damsel in distress like we normally picture her in the games she was actually more of a gung-ho princess she likes to get things done and granted that i'm perfectly okay with that peach isn't always the um the background character that's just waiting for her hero to save the day no, she actually get things done. She's also been a playable character since like the since like Mario 2. She's been a playable character in, in certain RPG games as well. She's also been playable in her own standalone game. She's been playable in Mario 3D World, so she is actually a very competent character too. And that is perfect. I love the, the portrayal of the character. This movie was just amazing. It was just a, a lot of fun. It was a complete ride from beginning to end. Um, there were a lot of other um, gags within the, the movie, a lot of callbacks to certain Mario games. There were some really interesting jokes that were thrown in the movie. Uh, I'm hoping most of you have already seen the movie, so of course there are probably going to be some spoilers here in this part of the video. Apparently Mario actually has like this, um, this hatred towards mushrooms, which is kind of ironic because the Sonic the Hedgehog movie pretty much referenced the same thing. But I was expecting Mario to say something similar to chili dogs instead of mushrooms, but I, I guess it kind of works story-wise. I guess they didn't want to do a throwback to the, the Sonic movie. Really funny jokes here and there. I mean, there was like one part where Peach was showing Mario how to do a, how to go to the obstacle course and how to, um, you know, take the, the, the Super Mushroom to be called him Super Mario. And apparently, with Mario's hatred of, um, of mushrooms, he didn't want to consume the mushroom. But Princess Peach pretty much shoved it down his throat just so just so he could get the, 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 the power up. That was pretty funny. And of course, after like many trial and error scenarios, it got to a point where like this brief two, three second scene where you actually see Mario like puking out of a balcony. Like he just he just had enough of eating mushrooms, but he has to put up with them nonetheless. <laughs> Those three seconds were enough to crack me up to see him <laughs> seeing him like bent over in a balcony. One of the little subtle gags they pretty much tell you what, the, what direction they were going with in the movie. There, there were other particular gags like involving Toad, involving Donkey Kong, which were funny, and thank god they didn't go any a, with any crude humor regarding Donkey Kong. Basically, Donkey Kong here is just portrayed as, a, as, he, as he should be, like a stubborn gorilla, hence the name. 
I totally thought it was a blast from beginning to end. The the nods to the, the power-ups as well, the fire flower, uh, aside from the magic mushroom, there's an ice flower. Uh, they actually used the cat suit, which is actually in the trailer. They used the, the tanuki suit as well for, yeah, you know, for, for flight in this case. The third act got pretty big, actually. I've noticed two particular references that kind of surprised me. One was a, um, I guess you could say a Terminator 2 reference, because there's this part with the Mario Kart scene where they're like driving on Rainbow Road, and uh, this blue Koopa, of course, is trying to take down Mario. The, the Koopa it gets knocked over, and of course, his car gets completely trashed, right? And it's, it's a ball of flames. And suddenly, he just walks out of it like it was nothing. Like he was T-1000 from Terminator 2. Like, what the hell? And of course, he just summons the blue shell and just takes out Mario. That was just... That was an, an interesting reference there. And there's even that one part, like, at the very end of the movie, with this, like, this whole final battle with uh, Mario and... Mario, Luigi, and Bowser at the very end. Where not only do they do a sort of like a reference to like Smash Brothers, but there's almost like a, a reference to like that uh, that double team kick from like uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion, like with that that synchronized kick at the end. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that actually re recognized that subtle reference, but uh, there you go. <laughs> Those are like two little callbacks to other intellectual properties. I mean, who would have thought I would see a Terminator reference in this movie? But go figure. But overall, um. Minor criticisms of the movie would probably be, one, I feel like Jack Black deserved more more screen time as Bowser because he clearly stole the show. Heck, the song that's actually played in the movie has become like a, a top 100 song in, in iTunes as of this video. Um, another criticism would be, of course, the, the fact that Yoshis were referenced in the movie, but we didn't really see much of Yoshi. But who knows, maybe they'll save that for the next movie. The, the door is open. For, for many possibilities. Easily, they could probably do a sequel and have it based off of uh, Luigi's Mansion. Maybe include Daisy somehow. Or maybe, I don't know, make, make a movie that's a reference to Mario Galaxy. That would be interesting and have Rosalina in there. Speaking of which, the, the Luma, there's this blue little Luma that was caged and that was shown in one of the trailers. He was also kind of like, kind of sadistic, kind of twisted in, in his own uh, innocent way. But overall, my experience with the movie was just, it, it was fun from beginning to end. And I almost teared up at how perfect the movie just ended. Everything was just flawless. I mean, I didn't have many criticisms whatsoever. So I highly recommend you watch this movie. If, if I was a critic, I would probably give this 4 out of 5 stars. Maybe 8 or 9, 9 out of 10. That would be the score. I highly recommend you watch this movie. If you're interested in watching it 2 or 3 or 4 times, feel free to do so. I'm just at a loss for words at how amazing this movie ended up being. So it's a high recommendation for me, definitely. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, remember to like, share, subscribe, and uh, hit that bell icon for, for other notifications. I will be making other videos later on. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. See you next time!